Hi there. Welcome to Bourbon Turntable. We are the show that blends the love of music with the love of whiskey. With me tonight, as always, is my good friend, Drew. Where's Drew? He's not here. He'll be back with us in just a minute, though. We were recently recording the show with Nancy Fraley, and it was so good. We had so much great content with her. It's had such a good time. The show went a little long. So rather than have one big, long show, we split it up into two shows. So this is the introduction to part two of the show with Nancy. Drew's going to be back with us in just a minute, as will Alan Bishop, who is with us for part one, and of course, Nancy. But before we get into that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Bar Cart Co-op. Bar Cart Co-op is a collection of friends who produce whiskey content for you, the whiskey consumer. We've got some great stuff going on in Bar Cart. We have the show Distillers Talk with Alan Bishop and Christy Atkinson. They interview distillers from across the country, around the world, throughout the galaxy, parts unknown. Great show. Always, always a good time there, especially if you are a real whiskey geek. We have My Whiskey Den. That show airs every Monday night at 9 o'clock with Pat and Mike. Uh, tune in there. That is where craft whiskey is king. Alan also has another show that he does with his, with his wife, Kim, called If You Have Ghosts, You Have Everything. They touch into the supernatural, the paranormal. Some of it has to do with uh, haunts at distilleries. Some of it doesn't. It's always an interesting story, though, so be sure to check it out. And of course, Bourbon Turntable is a show that you want to be a part of, and here is where you can find us. All right, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to find out when new episodes come out, which is every Wednesdays on all of your streaming services everywhere. Apple, Spotify, uh, whatever other ones there are, and the YouTube where you can watch the live recording itself. Thanks, as always, Mike. He's such a great asset to our show. And it's such a good sport to put up with this nonsense. So without any further of my stuff, let's get on with part two of the show with Nancy Fraley. Enjoy. Uh, Nancy Fraley, we're going to talk some music. And the first thing that I want to do when we're doing this is I want to bring, not that, but this up. Okay, so... The the group on the left, y'all look like you're you're gonna hunt down the bangles and <laughs> beat the crap out of Susanna Hoffs. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're ready. Yeah. You are ready. Tell us what this is, please. Well, we have uh, we were kind of a punk band, um, but but we also played Skinner too. <laughs> punk Skinner, I love it. Yeah, punk. Punk centered. Um, I I was at Harvard at that time. That uh, I would have been in grad school at that point. Um, my first bit band we were called the Russian Heads. Um, so um, the uh, I studied Russian uh, when I was at UT, and um, and uh, our lead guitarist was the nephew of Pat Head Summit. Wow. Head the Russian Heads. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Got so, it. And uh, and uh, he's still a good buddy of mine. And um, and you know, um, now, is this the band that's on the on the right? Is that what this is? is no, 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 um, the uh, one in the right was uh, when I was in um, in grad or in uh, in law school. So um, I, I've been in a number of bands um, over the years. Um, you know, one uh, uh, when I was at Harvard, we uh, uh, our band was called Spank. Okay. <laughs> Outstanding. They're, Good they're band that, name. That... Xmilo. I mean, I I've been yeah in a, a number of things. Um, uh, you know. Uh, over the years, so I, I was uh, back then. I was always playing drums and percussion. A um, uh, uh, knee injury kind of ended my career as a uh, as a kit drummer, so I moved over to bass guitar, and um, and I've been hacking away at uh, electric guitar and and acoustic for 
40 some years or so. I actually started out on banjo in about 1978. Wow. <laughs> East that's Tennessee, that, that math checks out. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an aggressive place to start, though. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm going to take up the banjo. You know, and you're what? Uh, eight years old or something eight right? years old. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. i like the uh i've been hacking away at guitar for 40 years and then there was the fist bump there was the <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i still really suck at, at guitar i mean i i would never ever play um guitar with other people that's the i mean i as much as i love guitar it's probably my favorite instrument I just said, uh, you know, I feel just so not confident on, on that, but, but, um, uh, bass guitar, drums, percussion. You, you know, the only, the only nice thing about guitar is, is that you can always palm mute as long as there's another guitar player and nobody notices. <laughs> nobody cares at all. Play mm -hmm. a little rhythm together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna, yeah, go. <laughs> Busting out any solos anytime. <laughs> At least not, you know, with, with other musicians. I, I just I, I don't feel confident. <laughs> sure. But the, the group on the left, there there's there's that punk vibe there. Uh, yeah, I get that. Yep. 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 That's I, I I don't think you can really see my drum kit there. And you see the symbol in my um um or the uh, ride symbol in my uh, uh, sticks, but yep. yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Let's see, you, you you sent some pictures of some of your guitars as well. Good yeah. grief! Look at yeah. that. oh yeah, look at that. Look, yeah. Been a, okay, uh, I'm so having I, a moment. <laughs> or, uh, so I, my um, uh, there there was an article that came out and uh, it was a whiskey um, advocate or. Um, uh, written by uh, Andrew Faulkner last year. I mm -hmm. think it came out in uh, November, you know, of yeah, uh, 2021. Um, the the height of my collection, I probably had about 25 guitars and basses. Um, uh, I've got a number of um, uh, Fender pre CBS era. Um, it, cards and bases. Um, I just, I, you know, I'm not, not only a collector, but I'm, I'm just, um, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, a player, of course. Um, but, um, I just, it, I, there was a, something about the beauty of these guitars and basses mm -hmm. that were made and, you know, uh, some of the, the bodies of these guitars, I want to think of like the, um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, Gibson Les Paul and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, um, uh, uh, Fender pre Precision Bass and, and, um, Telecaster Bass, uh, Strat and, and all, you know, from like the mid 1950s, that is art mm -hmm. and you know the the um the de design of of the guitars and, and basses themselves is a form of art i i think um uh you know it's uh you know functionality it's uh, just i it's uh, it's amazing and i'm 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 just i'm in love with um look at that hollow body god that's gorgeous mm -hmm. Yeah, that that that's a um, um, 1965 um, uh, uh, Guild Starfire one. Um, it is um, uh, is uh, serial number is 113. Wow, so it was one of the very first. That's a whole like weekend event for me. Like, what are you doing this weekend? Nothing with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Hey, uh, that first picture that you put up, Kevin. Uh, on that the, one? Yeah. So the the fender with the two uh, staggered single coils there. Yep. What's what's the story on that deal? Um, that is um uh that that's uh, a Fender Mustang from um August eight. 
And um, and that that was just, you know, uh, um, uh, Leo Fender, of course, sold the company um, to CBS, you know, the, the very beginning of 1965. So that that's an original. His last, um, you know, the uh, last gu guitar design that, that, mm -hmm. that Leo was ever part of. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, uh, it's um, it's been re um, uh, refinished. I mean, the, that I mean, you can probably tell that the uh, the white is not the color of white that you would usually find. Right. You know? um, do, you, do you get the? Do you get the? I, and I have to ask because I'm just being yeah, a dork sure. now, and yeah. I I used to play music, but Drew certainly knows more about guitars than I ever will. I'm sure. But do you get that cool low frequency hum with the uh, the interaction between those pickups being offset like that on the high end? It is amazing. I love that guitar. Now the uh, um, the uh, neck on it is uh, you know how and those those early um, um, uh, Mustangs had both an A and a B neck. So unfortunately, I've got the A neck, and you know even though I've got small hands. That a neck is really tiny, even for for me. I, I would have loved to, um, and I'm still kind of been looking for a, a, a good B neck from from um, from from 1964. Um, the um, uh, uh, the uh, Mustang bass that you saw on the the right side. Um, that one is uh, from my birth year, 1970. Um, and it's, uh, it, it was refinished in a, um, in a golf, um, you know, you know, golf oil, um, racing colors. So, mm -hmm. you know, kind of that, um, Robin blue and, and the, um, uh, uh, orange, uh, uh, stripe there, but I love that base that, that thing must be, dang, I, it that must be about five point seven pounds or so it's it's light as a feather and it wow. is just so easy playing that's um actually become one of my favorites that bass is screaming for one of those old mopar decals <laughs> <laughs> just it, saying it, yeah is that a rickenbacker bass in there too it is, and you know that um, that uh, Rick. It, it was from uh, 2014, and uh, the um, uh, 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 G string kept on slipping off. So I, I actually I sold it. I I was not very. I mean, I it, it was a beautiful bass, but uh, I ended up not playing it a whole lot. Just did. It, it didn't, I, I didn't like the ergonomics of it. And, um, you know, I, I love the idea of, of a Rick bass. Mm -hmm. I, I love the Rick guitars, uh, like the uh, 330 or 360 or so, but the, that uh, four, 403 bass, uh, just said, it just, the uh, ergonomics just didn't work for me on it. Mm -hmm. So. I sold it. <laughs> Sadly, I, I might get another one day, you know, like a yeah. 4,001. But <laughs> so, all right. So I, I want to ask you two questions, uh, music related questions. Uh, and then I, I want us to switch over and, and, and try this uh, second uh, whiskey. Uh, and then we'll get back into some more music. Um, so your favorite drummer, what drummer, what drummer did you like the best and what drummer did you try to emulate when you played? Probably Ginger Baker. Um, a, a mix between uh, Ginger Baker and Neil Peart. And I, I, I know that's so cliche, but, um, but I just, I'm, I'm a huge Rush fan, huge Rush fan, you know, have been for 40 years, <laughs> you know, just like I love Um yeah. All right, yeah. so so Nancy's got to get in our little group that we have with uh, Steve uh, Bayshore, Allen. Drunk videos incoming. Yes. <laughs> Nancy, this is a very very special uh, Facebook uh, messenger group <laughs> where 
at random times we'll just start getting live videos of of rush songs and you know did you, did you guys five in the in the evening did you guys see the the <laughs> second taylor hawkins concert where where adam carey from tool played drums with rush it was awesome sell me a ticket now <laughs> or danny carey sorry not adam carey danny yeah. carey yes it was awesome yeah so. yeah that and that that was a big loss too for the, the taylor oh, yeah. Hawkins, um, yes, it was. I, I was a big fan too. Yeah. So that, you know, that, that was just... okay. So, same question, but uh, from a bass player standpoint, um, can I name two? Absolutely, well, you named two before, and that was fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, Jack Bruce, I mean, you can probably tell I, I kind of like cream a little bit. <laughs> so you're the person, you're one of these people who their least favorite member of cream was Clapton. Is that it? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I get it. Hey, you know, you know, that's, I mean, I, I love Clapton, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ginger Baker and Jack yeah. Bruce are, you know, my idols. Um and that, and, and I really hope I don't embarrass myself by saying this. Um, Peter Cetera in the Terry Kath era. Okay. Does wow. that make sense? Do you do you know what I'm saying? Um, so so I I think um, Peter Cetera, you know, he's he's kind of of that mold of being you know a very um, melodic bass player. You know, mm -hmm. ju just like um, James Jamerson, which you know was you know you know probably where all of us that love um, uh, melodic bass playing get our you know uh, roots from. Um, uh, he was an influenced by Paul McCartney, of course. You know, like a you know after Rubber Soul kind of you know as his bass playing evolved. Um, you know, uh, and some of those old sh Chicago. Um, uh, uh, I love sh Chicago too, but I but it, it was only during the Terry Kath era. I'm not talking about the the sappy shit. <laughs> oh, appreciate it, Nancy. Uh, yeah, you know, if you have to, you know, bleep that what, nope. whatever. But nope. but but you know that I don't know if you guys like um um that or not, or if if you like um. Uh, like blood, sweat, and tears, yep. or uh, anything like that. Uh, Jeb Felder, um, as, as a bassist. Um, yeah, oh. I, I like the. I, I also like D. Murray a lot. Um, when he was playing with um, Elton John. Yeah. You know, before his death. Um, again, I I like those melodic. Um. Uh, bass players, and I also like, um, and, and, and Getty Lee too, of course. Is uh, mm -hmm. I, I know you asked for one, and you know I, I've, I've given you. <laughs> That's all right. It's like what's your favorite Maddie, whiskey? Well, I, what am I drinking know, now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it depends on your mood, right? Yeah. One, one, one you should maybe check out too, Nancy. And I don't, you may be familiar with them already. And I, <clears throat> I throw this out there because I recently had a revelation that like. I might be listening to music more for melodic bass than I realized, and that probably comes from being a Rush fan, but uh, a little different style of music. Uh, but Peter Still from Typo Negative, like there's I've there's a whole before, but I haven't so, heard them. Yeah, so so many of the Typo Negative songs like lean on the Beatles really heavily in the first place, but when they get into like the melodic thing, the bass is leading everything. Man, so I love that. Um, I also like um, uh, 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 Robbie Shakespeare, and um, I so I I like um, uh, well you know the some uh, reggae as well, and um, uh, um, the, what's his name? Um, 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 family Man um, uh, uh, Aston that uh, played with. Um, uh, Bob Marley. Oh, yeah. The you know, very uh, you know Fender J, J bass playing Barrett, right yeah. At, at, yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah yeah they're right yeah family man parrot <laughs> so so where do you come down on like uh, uh funk bass players like a Bernard Edwards from Chic and that kind of thing. Is that? Oh, I, I love that. And I, I love uh, Bootsy Collins and, you know, the funk. Yeah. And yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but... Uh, Kevin just schoolgirled for anybody who was watching the video. I don't know if anybody <laughs> saw that face, but he totally schoolgirled just then. Um, because, because one that I think it, it might throw people off, kind of like, Peter Cetera, when you said that, that kind of threw me off at first because my first thought of Peter Cetera is okay, the you know, the, the real sappy, you know, this is the theme for our homecoming dance stuff. Right. Um, but if you go back to what Chicago really was, that, that wasn't it. And and that's uh, John Taylor of Duran Duran. Uh, a lot of times you think of Duran Duran, you're thinking, okay, this is pop fluff but if you really kind of dig into dig into the music a little bit you're going to get a, a little i think you're going to get a different impression of what they're doing musically there uh <laughs> that just unfortunately gets overshadowed by simon Lebon and everything that, that he's doing but hey. i absolutely <laughs> agree yeah yep so so I, I have another question here, and I know we haven't touched on on Skinnerd yet, and I'm I'm saying that as a non Skinnerd fan, by the way. But so I, I do have to ask this because if I ask my normal, here's this is my normal when I get invited on Bourbon Turntable question is square body Chevy or Ford seven late seventies through late eighties, and I'm not going there this time. So here's my question because you are a musician, you're playing bass, you got to pick a drummer, a guitar player, and a singer. Anybody you want throughout history, who is it? It's a good question. Good question, Alan. Yeah, okay. Well, I I have to admit, I, I tend to like male voices better than female voices. Um, so I uh, maybe the only exception to, to that would be Nancy Wilson from Heart, but that's um so I she's incredible. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, that said, I, um, I mean, Anne, Anne Wilson, not, not Nancy. Yeah. Nancy, yeah. Played acoustic. <laughs> um, I would probably have to say, um, I love untrained voices, but, but yet that are powerful. Uh, maybe it's cliche. I love Mick Jagger. Mm -hmm. Um, his, his voice, um, guitarist. Oh boy. Um, Jimmy Page is probably my all time favorite um, guitarist. Again, you know, maybe kind of cliche, but mm -hmm. <laughs> what can I say? I mean, I just, oh my God, I just melt um, <laughs> at, at Jimmy's playing. Um, <clears throat> what was the other thing? Drummer? Mm -hmm. Drummer? Um, I might take a lot of flack for this um i love neil peart and and you know he's uh you know a, a, as a you know consummate rush fan <laughs> for 40 years and all i find his drumming a little too tight and so i would want somebody a little looser at, um mm -hmm. who kind of uh, swings a little bit more mm -hmm. so maybe um uh, either um john Bonham, or I would have to say probably John, John Bonham. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, once he learned how to swing, yeah, you know that that just wow, really, you know, opened things up. Right tool uh, for the right job. That <laughs> pretty tough to beat that crew right there. It is. It is. And here I was thinking I was smart. Like my answer to that question is just let me be part of Eagles of death metal. I don't care what I do. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll be a roadie. It's fine. Yeah. That's, um, and you know, for, for bass guitar, um, well, that's God, that, that one, 
I would have to say probably James Jamer, uh, James Jamerson because he is the foundation of so many people of, of that whole melodic style. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I I just I I now I I don't know what this band would sound like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be pretty darn good. It'd be uh, you, you'd sell out a crowd. That's for darn sure, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, my my really shitty version of the Eagles of Death Metal will open for you. <laughs> we sound we sound the same, but worse. <laughs> oh. oh goodness! Hey, let's drink some more whiskey. How about that? All, all for more whiskey. Yep. The uh, the the second pour that we're doing here with oh, Nancy. Wow is from our friend Lenny Eckstein, who's the owner and distiller at Deer Hammer okay. in uh, Buena Vista, Colorado. And what we have tonight is their American single malt that is finished in export casks. Um, mm. It is the, the single malt is two years old and it's aged one to two years in, in the export casks and it That's comes good. in at a hundred proof. Oh, sweet. Unreal. Not to jump the gun, but this is probably my favorite when we had Lenny on before. <laughs> and we I had just had a huge dinner or something with red meat right before you know we came on and it was just a perfect, perfect balance. I don't typically reach for a single malt, but this one made me reconsider and I have since bought a couple of bottles. So yeah. I'm a fan. Shout out Lenny. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge Lenny fan. Uh and I, I love his spirit, the fact that he wants to go after he, – he's like anybody that's really passionate about this. He wants to go after an idea. And I don't know if you guys pick up on this as well, but um, one of the things I noticed on the nose on this, so Nancy said that there was a sweetness there. But I automatically on this, I always get like a little hint of like rosemary. Like I want to eat a big like blue or like medium rare steak oh, and then have this. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, that sounds incredible. I bet. Yeah, that, that uh, I get something almost like a um, like a uh, espresso type of note on mm -hmm. it, hmm. like the um, like a caramel macchiato or or a um, no, I I'll go back to espresso. It's a little bit and uh, from a barrel standpoint. Uh, I know that the original barrels, I don't know the exact char, but I know that they're, they're, uh, heavily toasted, lightly charred. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. There's also for me on, especially on the finish and then breathing out <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that <clears throat> excuse me, that slightly herbal thing comes a little bit more to the forefront mm -hmm. there. I love it. I do too. Okay. Somebody, somebody help me walk this through. There is a berry note right at the end, you know, kind of breathing back out and it's not as tart as a raspberry. It's not as sweet as maybe kind of the great blueberry type thing. Does anyone else get that? Or is my palate just shot to hell? No, no, no. I, I've, I get it. It's kind of like pomegranate. Okay. I can so, definitely see that. Yes. Sweet and tart. And, um, and it, it, it kind of pre presents that way. It's almost like a pomegranate syrup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not, not fresh pomegranate juice. I, I don't know if you've ever, um, uh, cooked with pomegranate syrup before, but it, no. it, it's, uh, it, it's kind of like a sweet sour thing. Going. Okay, or even that <clears throat> that almost phenolic like, uh, and I I use this a lot, but it's it's one of those things that I think people are familiar with and don't realize they are. But like that phenolic like um, uh, blackberry jam versus jelly, where you have the seeds, mm -hmm. that phenolic mm -hmm. character yep. the seeds bring through. Absolutely, there's also something I'm getting that's a little bit like a, and I I don't mean for this to sound off putting because I I don't think of it that way at all. Um, like, but like a, a salumi type of note, there's like a little meatiness. Um, mm -hmm. And I, 
I don't find that. I mean, I, I love, uh, you know, like hot Copa or, you know, mild Copa or what, whatever. Um, but, but it's almost like a little bit of charcuterie mm -hmm. in a sense. And, and not, I, that's not a negative. I, again, I, I don't mean that as a negative. That's a, a very positive thing. No, I, I think that there's that, I, I get like a, a, a little bit of a smokehouse note to mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the same thing, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And definitely, yeah. definitely not a negative in a in a, a single malt sort of characteristic either. That right. that slightly sulfurish sort of characteristic that comes across. It's not that's not bad at all mm -hmm. in a single malt for sure. What was the um, just uh, oh good go on. We just, I was just going to say, we need to just have Nancy on here for like five hours and just send her blind samples of <laughs> all the weirdness that comes to us. And I, I just, yeah. I literally, I want to watch her reaction and I want to watch her talk about music. And I'm happy. Yep. I'm happy with that too. You know, bur bourbon music uh, it makes me happy all day. <laughs> <laughs> kind of why we have a show. That's, that's, that's what we're after. That's what we're after. We we were doing this for free in Kevin's basement and now we do it for free on the internet once a week. <laughs> I, I feel like, like we, we need to do this a year from now and we just need to send her like the things that we pull aside. Like, you know, you guys know how I told you, I don't collect anything, but I have like the, the samples of all the worst stuff in the world. Like <laughs> I just want to send her some of that stuff with a note that says, you're probably not going to like this, but I'm curious. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to do that. Have, have, have you ever taken my nosing for faults class, Alan? Oh yeah, yeah, I took it. Yeah, down at Wichita University. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right, yeah. Oh. So like, all, all, all that nasty stuff. Yeah, that we, <laughs> we go through. That. So I'm, I'm glad that's, that you've been a collector of the badge. <laughs> that's all I have. That I literally like, I have nothing good to drink at my house short of things that I've made on the side. Everything else is just like a collection of the worst things that you could possibly ever put in front of somebody. Uh, <laughs> things that are not even allowed to be opened in the house or in this house. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm curious, what's the uh, proof on, on this? 100. 100. Okay. Yeah pretty special yeah, there, yep. there's a little um a little soapiness on it yeah the the thing uh one of the things that i, I respect about lenny is i like that though he, he'll try anything and just hey let's see what happens and if it turns out great awesome if it turns out terrible then he's taking notes and he's learning from it and trying to take something out of it that is a positive that he can apply to something else down the road and you know he he's he's it's a fairly small distillery there in colorado but he's i just love his approach to things and i think he makes some really really good whiskey and um, that's I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it nancy yeah that's, yeah, that's what I yeah. that's what I love about him too is like we had him on distillers talk with Christy and we we were explaining the uh the old school like early 1800s sour mash and the lacto infection stuff versus using hot used mash and the next day Lenny's like I just started a pit of trash I hope you're happy <laughs> <laughs> I was like cool let me know how it goes brother <laughs> I love that <laughs> Um, let's, uh, let's, let's go back and, and, and while we're, we're tasting, do you see, uh, Nancy, a difference, uh, from tasting, maybe, maybe the exact same thing from one time to the next that you may love it one time, not like it the next time and then love it again later. Is that something that you, you experience or is it basically I've tried this, I like it. And that's just kind of the way it stays. Or, um, or I hate it forever. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. That is a loaded question. So um, I think it depends on um, time of day. Mm -hmm. You know, my palate. You know what what's going on. You know, time of year, um, allergy season, 
all those kind of things. Um, I know, you know, some, some things that I always love that, you know, I, I hit it at the wrong time of year, wrong time of day. And, you know, it, it tastes really angular and aggressive and, and terrible to me. And, but, you know, most of the time it's really lovely. Um, or, you know, I, it's, you know, one of, one of my favorites, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, all, all those, those kind of things come into play, you know, your, your emotions, your mood, your, mm -hmm. the, sure. the, you know, heat, cold, um, you know, allergy season, you know, all those things coming into play. Um, you know, I, I mean, there, there are some that I know that I love, mm -hmm. 90% of the time, but you hit me up at the wrong, you know, wrong time of day, wrong season, wrong mood, and mm -hmm. it's, it's not there. And yep. I think that's, that's normal for any of us, you know, you know, we all have our favorites. Um, and, you know, you just uh, get hit up at the wrong time, and it's gonna be off for you. And uh, I'm a good name for that, a, but it makes a difference for sure. Yep. So you you're you're exposed to all these samples all the time too. And here's another fun question for you. Uh, and then we need to get into the Skinner question <laughs> questions. Um, so, is there a whiskey that you have that is like you don't have to think about it? Like you can, you can just go to it, turn your brain off. Right. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to like dive into it. You don't have to analyze it. Cause mm -hmm. I, like I have one and I joke around, I call I call it tractor whiskey is what I call it. And that's probably not a healthy thing to say, <laughs> but if, I, if I'm working yeah. around, right. If I'm working around the farm, like, and I don't want to think about it, I have a whiskey that I go to and it's, it's literally it's Sazerac rye. I don't have to like, look at it. I don't have to analyze it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do anything. I just drank it. And I'm curious if you have one of those. I do actually. Um, Wild Turkey 101. And I, I have to say, you know, I, um, you know, there are a few few things going on. You know, I can, you know, I've been in, um, you know, you know, just you know, hole in the wall bars in the middle of nowhere you know if i'm right. on the road or whatever it's it's a um a whiskey that i know you know i could a probably find in about any dive bar right where you know if i happen to be out in the middle of nowhere which i am you know have been quite often um two it and here's the thing that really respect um is that it's a uh, you know as a um and i'm I'm sure you get this too, Alan, for sure. Um, you know, as a distiller or blender, it is so hard to create that level of consistency over time again and again and again and again mm -hmm. that I just, it, it's a, a whiskey that I just absolutely respect. Um, you know, I, I know, you know, I can be out in the middle of, you know, a hundred miles from everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, some dive bar, which, you know, happens to me quite often <laughs> when I'm on the road. But, and, you know, I just want to, you know, a, a decent pour of something and I don't trust their cocktails. Um, you know, it's it's going to be some kind of sweet, nasty thing happening. Um, I know I can just get a, you know, a, a little bit of that neat, you know, maybe a, if I, you know, it's hot outside, I'll get a couple of rocks on the side or something. And I know it's going to be consistent right? Mm -hmm. and it's going to be good and I'm going to enjoy the evening. And, um, and that, uh, again, you know, it's a, it's a blender. I have to say to, to be able to create that is really difficult. It's not a sexy job for sure. Um, to, you know, like maker's mark or, um, you know, wild Turkey one oh one. it's not, you know, the, you know, the, the latest, greatest or the, um, you know, the, the most innovative thing going on, but I just so respect what it takes to, to do that and to have the discipline to do that. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's almost always consistent. Yeah. 
well, like 99.9% of the time, it's, it's going to be a good pour. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard uh, Freddie No was talking about uh, being white label. And he said, it yeah. pays the bills so we can do everything else we want to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You know. <clears throat> so. Yep. Uh, all right. So, so, so Nancy, one question that we ask everybody that's, that's a guest on the show is what was your first album? Do you remember that? I do actually. Yeah. Um, it, it was Selton John. <laughs> it's right. hits, you know, they had B Benny and the Jets, you know, Rocket Man, um, you know, I, all, all those great um, things. And, uh, you know, speaking of albums, I so miss, you know, taking off the cellophane and <laughs> you know, the smell. Right. You, know, you could, you know, you had the cover art. Yep. It was just cool as hell. Yeah. No, there, the, the, there's a, a generation maybe a generation and a half now that that you know doesn't know the the sensation of going out and buying an album yeah. you may have heard unless it's the greatest test you know you may have heard one maybe two songs off of it on the radio and you're buying it and you know you then you get to hear everything else for the first time and you know, there, there are, there are albums that I've bought over the years that it's just, that's, that's the thing. And you sit there and you listen to the songs and you read the album, right? You've got the liner I, notes on the, on know. the, on the, and you're reading, and you know, who played the bass on this and wow. So-and-so they played, uh, they, they did backing vocals and you're reading the lyrics and it, it's just a different experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just the, the art, the um, whole sensory thing of it, you know, the the smell of, yeah, I, it, it was just amazing. I, um, and before you go on to any more questions, I'll I'll have to say, you know, I uh, lately I've started, um, you know, I years ago I got rid of my all my vinyls, started collecting vinyl again mm -hmm. because you know, it's ownership. Yeah, and and the the sound quality. I don't care what you say, but I, it it just there's just nothing like that that sound and, and that feel that mm -hmm. you get from vinyl. Right. Yeah, and if you want to su really support an artist, buy their product. Yes. You know, because because yeah. streaming it, they're making point zero 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 one zero 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 one cents every time you play it uh, but you know if you find a band you know I mean, if you if you go out and you buy you know uh led zeppelin four on vinyl you know okay <laughs> congratulations you've contributed another three dollars to the to, the, to uh, uh jimmy page and john paul jones and uh robert plant yeah. all right <laughs> But if you've got a band that you really like that is a, a, a newer group or uh, somebody that, that is not uh, a big-time name, that means a lot to them. It, it really does. And, you know, I, it, it, it helps support them. It, you know, helps support artists. Mm -hmm. Helps, um, uh, and, you know, you you own the music at that point. You know, you, you know if you miss a payment with apple you know blah 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 you know on, on your iphone you know, you're, you're just you know right right and so well you know you would lose all of that you're you're really renting the music and and i'm a huge proponent of helping artists and you know i don't know there's there's i'm what can i say i i could go on um you know, for, forever on on my thoughts on vinyl, but I'm a huge vinyl fan for sure. That's well, vi vinyl is uh, it's it's very similar to absinthe. There's a ritual to it, right? You got uh, if you if you get if you're gonna go to if you're gonna go to sleep listening to music and you listen to vinyl, you know how long you got, right? You know how long you got, right? That's true. That's true. Uh, Nancy, do you remember your first concert? 
I do actually. Um, I was 12 years old and um, it was an Alabama concert. Right. Um, and um, I remember concerts way back then were just like a hell of a lot wilder than anything you would ever find today. Um, I, I so remember that. It was, um, uh, God, I, I forgot where we were in Tennessee, um, the town might come back to me if I, if I haven't had a, you know, a couple of drams in, but that, that is said, um, you know, I, I just remember it was, it was just a lot more rowdy than anything you'd ever find in, in this day and age. And it was fun. I mean, you know, even at 12 years old, it was like a, you know, education. Right. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. So, um, let's talk a little bit about Leonard Skinner. Can we do that? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so it was, um, golly, 45 years ago, um, October 20th, that there was a uh, plane crash in uh, Mississippi as the band was flying from uh, Greenville, South Carolina. I believe they're heading to Louisiana. And that plane went down. And when it did, uh, Ronnie Van Zant, who is the, the lead singer and, and uh, heart of the group, uh, Steve Gaines and, and uh, Steve Gaines' sister, who was a backup singer for the band, um, uh, they passed away uh, as addition in addition to the pilot, the co-pilot, and I, I believe their touring manager, Dean uh, Kilpatrick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, but between basically August of 1973 and October of 1977, they produced uh, five uh, different albums, um, and uh, so N Nancy, I'll just throw it out to you uh, first. Uh, what what are your thoughts about uh what uh, why is that band something that's important to you because you're sitting there with a leonard skinner t-shirt on and a ronnie van zant hat so uh, yep. that's not just a, a passing uh passing thing for you what what's the significance of this band to you mm, no sir um it is um well, wow. well, you know, first of all, as a Southerner, um, you know, it's it it has been uh, Leonard Skinner has been the soundtrack of my life since I was born. Um, I remember that on the radio, you know, from it, my earliest memories mm -hmm. are are of Leonard Skinner. Um, it's, um, I think, uh, you know, the, um, you know, Gary and uh, Gary Rothington and, you know, Alan Collins and, um, you know, Ed King and mm -hmm. Leon uh, uh, Wilkinson and Ronnie Van Sant, you know, all, all these guys, um, you know, might not have been, you know, the, the fastest players out there. I have not, you know, always been the most technical, but there is something about playing from the heart, and um, you know that um, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's a um, it's a very um, you know even though you know when they were out at, out at the uh, Hell House, you know they were you know right rehearsing everything, you know, just, you know, over and over and over and over again. But, but, you know, when, when you hear them, um, you know, live or, or, you know, on, on, um, disc or uh, whatever, there's, there's something that's, um, you know, they're better technical players for sure, but there is just, um, something that's so real and authentic about that music mm -hmm. um that that just you know the 
subjects or I, you know, I'm a huge Hank Williams uh, mm -hmm. senior fan. Well, I, I love junior and <laughs> three as well, but, but that's, uh, you know, and, and you know, that's, uh, you know, very authentic music and uh, you know, it's um, you know, are there more technical you know, players for sure? Yeah. But, but um, when it, when it comes to the songwriting and the um, uh, you know, the, guitar parts that are just so tailored for the music and it's not about um you know ego it's man i i just i just don't know how to describe it 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 just it touches me in a way that um very few i'm i'm a huge beatles fan they're you know probably my you know that the, them and the stones and such you know and you know other um uh, you know, bands I love, but um, um, it it just it it touches me in a way that I I don't think I've ever been touched before. Um, and um, and again, you know, all my fifty two, well, well, almost fifty three here soon years um, is is just been the the soundtrack to my life. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. and. In fact, I don't know if this is inappropriate of me to, to bring it out right now, but a, um, earlier this year, I did a um, Joseph Magnus cigar blend, um, batch 77 for 1977. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the crash, a um, um, special blend called Freebird. And, um, you know, just as a tribute, I, I was actually listening to, you know, that smell and you know, needle and spoon and, you know, right. all, you know, all those, um, you know, classics, um, you know, you've, uh, um, you know, uh, when it, when I was blending that, um, I don't know, you know, it, it just, it, it just touches me in a way that I, I think, I don't know if I'm, you know, how articulate I am, you know, how many bourbons in right now, but <laughs> yeah. it just, it, it just touches me in a, in a way um, that I, I think nobody else does. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said for that. I think, and all of us could probably pick an artist or two and would attest to it gets in your DNA early, mm -hmm. right? It's, it becomes a part of, these shared experiences and these formative moments and it just kind of sinks into you. Uh, and those are the kind of artists that, that really get to you more than any others. It is really kind of hard to put it in words, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. And that, um, I don't know if you all know this, uh, but earlier, uh, back this year in June, my, uh, twin sister and nephew and I actually went to a uh, go stay at the uh, Van Zant house oh, wow. um uh this been uh turned into a um you know it's, it's like an airbnb type thing and uh my the three of us were uh you know we stayed there for a few days we uh went on a tour with uh gene odom um uh ronnie van zant's best friend and i buy it Twin sister happens to to live across uh, the uh, St. John's River from you know where Skinnerd you know um, you know Orange Park and um, right that, that uh, area you know where they um, lived and you know uh, practiced and all that. So I've got some some family roots in in that area too. But um um I it it, it was. I don't know how to say it. It was a spiritual experience for for me to stay where you know in in, in the same bedroom where Ronnie, pardon me, fucking Van Zant, <laughs> wrote music. Right. I mean, it it was just I just amazing to 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 me to stay there and um, yeah. so. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I love those boys. I, I just, you know, they, they've been part of my life or my entire life, you know, yeah. my entire life. Yeah. Right. Alan Bishop, what do you have to say? So I'm, I am not a huge Leonard Skinner fan. I'll just say that up front. Um, but 
my what? rationale behind that is because because my my so I got Rush and Black Sabbath from my dad. We've talked about this on the show before. My first two albums, what I got from them. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure that my dad just tried to burn Leonard Skinner into my soul, <laughs> and I think my soul was like, "No, we're not doing this." Now that said. There are things that I really do like about Leonard Skinner. It's not that I don't like the band and I don't think that they're talented. It's the the connotation that comes along with them, right? So like the radio friendly stuff, okay? And even some of the songs that I like from them are the radio friendly things. So like Give Me Back My Bullets, I love that. The, like I I shower seeing that song, no shit. And this is the first <laughs> time I have ever admitted that to anybody. And uh The Ballad of Curtis Slow, I love that yes. song. I absolutely yeah. do. Yeah. I also love those demos that they did at Muscle Shoals. I don't know if you guys have heard mm -hmm. those those early yeah. demos that they did. Yep. Yep. That yep. stuff is to me that is better than anything else in their entire catalog because that is literally like the best bar band, and I mean that in the best possible way ever that I've ever heard. I do love that stuff. It's the the Simple Man thing and the Sweet Home Alabama and the that whole like, and even like the later stuff. Obviously, you know, with with his brother stepping in and. Maybe there's some part of like my dad playing. He had a NASCAR game at one point in time with Molly Hatchet flirting with disaster, right? And like all I can hear in my head is like every Saturday morning, like Martin with the dater. And I can't like it's like a show tune thing. I can't get past it. So I do respect them, right? I think they're a great band. And I did, I did, I did have this. I had a moment with my dad one time. We went to go see Leonard Skinner, obviously, you know, more modern Leonard Skinner right. uh with ZZ Top. And I love ZZ Top. Me too. Didn't like yep. Skinner, but I came out of it, you know, hanging out with dad and doing the whole thing and being like, all right, I I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I see it. I understand. I completely get it. But uh, oh. yeah, not one of my favorite bands, but definitely a respectable band and much more respectable than I think most of what's out there now, for sure. Uh, to, to me, when I was young, uh, I wasn't a big Skinnerd fan myself because a lot of the people that really liked Skinnerd, um, they were kind of scary. <laughs> you know, they were the kind of people that, you know, you, you look at them the wrong way, they'll <laughs> beat you up. So uh, that's true. I, I didn't really get like it. Like they might be from Pekin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, yes. Um, uh, but, um, and, and I think uh, that uh, I kind of dismissed it as, well, it's just, you know, a bunch of redneck music. And one, there's nothing wrong with redneck music. Uh, but but two, the the work that this band put in to, to their music uh, was was phenomenal. And the the level of precision that, that they wanted to perform at uh, was up there with, with anybody. I don't care who they were. Um, and I think that, that, that first Leonard Skinner, Skinner album really defined uh, what Southern rock was. Yeah. And I think that, that uh, the first song off that first album, I'm not the one is, it's not their most popular song by any means, but to me, that one song, that's like, we're putting our stamp on, we're the best Southern rock band in the world, mm -hmm. period. And nobody really knew what that was at the time, but looking back on it, uh, you know, it had a little bit of everything. And I've got my, th this is my, this is where, you know, you've got a good Southern rock band. One, you got to have slide guitar. Okay. Yes. All you, right. You got to have that that piano going. Uh, you got to have somebody's got a whistle at some point in 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 the album. Somebody's got a whistle. Yep. <laughs> you you have to in some way be able to describe the music as rollicking, <laughs> and the the lyrics have to be southern, meaning you're using ain't and you're dropping your G's and you know it's just you're. You know, if Alan wrote like he talked, you're writing your <laughs> lyrics like you talk. And and Skinner hits hits all those marks and hits them uh, as good as anybody ever has. 
and I, I don't apologize for for yelling free bird at any concert that i might happen to be at even if it's drew crawley's who 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 would have ever realized that the word washington had a silent r in the middle of it (laughs) (laughs) that's that's a different thing altogether but uh is it though no not really (laughs) it's really not um but uh i i love love skinner now uh listen to them frequently um and uh just the the legacy of that band uh endures <clears throat> i don't care for the way it's being presented at, uh, now uh, i think there are people just kind of living off of that uh five album legacy <laughs> over those four years in the 70s um, but um, i i think it's it's tough to beat that four year run that they had. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I, I, I want to throw this in there real quick before, before we move on to, because I, I think this about a few different bands. All right. So they're, they're still out there. They're doing their thing. There's, there's none of the original people left, right? Correct. They're uh, all, they're all no, out there, right? Uh, Rosington. I think okay. All right. Sure, there's one. So, yeah. but, all right. but he doesn't tour anymore. Yeah. Right. So are there, and granted, you know, there was some success after the crash, etc. Right? Um, right. At least, at least there was some living off of the nostalgia whatsoever. But there was some amount of success whatsoever. Right. Right. After a hiatus, yeah. Yes, but I do wonder. All right. So two, two it's twofold thing. So the definition of immortality is is people still talk about you a hundred years after you're gone, and people will certainly whatever I think about that band, they're right. still going to be talking about Leonard Skinner a hundred years after Leonard Skinner is gone, mm-hmm. and a hundred years after whatever popular culture figures out what falls where, right? Right. So that yeah. that's important, but I also wonder sometimes too, and maybe the current incarnation is not the one that gets there, and and probably obviously it is not. But are there bands and ideas and thoughts uh, that should continue on for multiple generations, right? Uh, I mean, you take a band like Leonard Skinner or a band like ACDC or uh, mm-hmm. uh, even a, even a, maybe even Van Halen. You've got Wolf Gang Van Halen out there, right? Uh, right? And maybe one day he'll want to play his dad's music. Right now he doesn't. But I, I do think that there are concepts like that that can last for multiple generations. What, if there's distilleries that can go through multiple generations, why can't bands get to that point too? And that's, that's something I've often wondered about. Yeah. I think you're spot on, Alan. Um, uh, so I'm, you know, I, I was just reading today and I'm, I, you know, I'm always, you know, trying to learn my Skinner history <laughs> as it were, but, um, uh, uh, Ronnie actually, um, it, uh, I think in 1977, his voice, he was, um, uh, had a lot of soreness in his um, throat and such. And he was actually talking to the band about maybe having his brother, Johnny, who was now, you know, been the Mm -hmm. lead singer for what, 32 years or so, you know, since the uh, reforming of the band in 1987, um, uh, you know, to, 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 take the, the uh, lead singing over. But um, from what I understand, you know, these guys really wanted the music to continue. And, um, you know, I, you know, I think about Rick <clears throat> Medlock, for instance, you know, he played drums along Bob Burns, um, mm-hmm. what, 1971, 72 or, or so, you know, he, he later came on as a lead guitarist and, um, mm-hmm. And, um, but you know, that I, you know, maybe it's not the original incarnation, but I, I kind of get the, the sense from, from, you know, what the original guys wanted. They, they wanted the music to go on and, um, and Gary Washington has stated that himself. He, he wants that music to go on. He's the only, you know, original, um, uh, member that's still alive but you know that um and and as long as the music goes on and i i have to say you know i just saw these guys a week and a half ago <laughs> and um uh, you know for you know and 
it was so amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, you know, maybe it was not exactly like it is with, you know, where, what it would have been with Ronnie and mm -hmm. Gaines, right. <laughs> Alan Collins and such, but, but it, it, it was, it, it was just amazing, and it and it really you know the the energy was captured, and um, well, there's 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 a an ultimate truth, and I think that's what yeah. uh, Kevin and you both have said <laughs> about that band. There's a truth there, and and maybe even if the band as it currently exists doesn't necessarily hit that original truth, there's right. always it's folk music all ultimately, and it should right. live on, and it can come around to being something cool. Like there's bands we can all agree, like listen, no matter who Queen gets to sing for them, it's never going to be right. Queen. No matter who the doors get to sing for them, it's never going to be the doors. It can't be done again. But I do think that there's a there's a, a beauty and a purity to what Skinner did that it could last for a long time and it could go sure. on forever and ever with you know mm -hmm. throughout generations. So, yeah, one way or the other. Yeah. Well, in um uh, the uh, uh when I when when I heard um uh Johnny sing here in Concord, uh, uh California. I've heard him so many times. He's never sounded as much as like Ronnie as he did that night. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, if I had been blindfolded, <laughs> I would have never known that that was Johnny wow. singing and not Ronnie. I mean, wow. he sounded, you know, his uh, voice is a little deeper than, than what, what Ronnie's was. It's a little, a little gruffer and such, but it, it was so, so close. Yeah. I, I just, I wouldn't have known that. Well, all right. Well, we're 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 pushing uh, a couple hours here with you, Nancy. So we want to re respect your time um, and can't thank you enough for being with us, for talking uh, the some whiskey with us, talking about your career, um, how you you became uh, the superhero, the nose, uh, and then talking some music with us, especially uh, talking about Leonard Skinner. It's it's been a, an incredible treat. Uh, but, uh, before we, uh, get out of here, uh, we want everybody to have a chance to share where people can find you on uh, social media. So, so Nancy, we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. Um, so when I, I'm on, uh, Instagram at, uh, Nancy L. Fraley, um, I'm on Facebook, but I, I'm not there as much anymore. Um, but, I, but you can definitely find me on, um, uh, Instagram these days. And, and, uh, for anybody that, um, uh, you know, if you taste something, you know, anything I've ever made before and you want to, um, uh, you know, let me know you're tasting it. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually, I, I try and be very, uh, proactive when I, when I have the time to, to, get back to people, you know, if they're, you know, um, posting some cool photographs or what, whatever of something. <laughs> you know, I always try and make time to uh, get back to fans and uh, connoisseurs and such. So, um, you know, that's all, I'll do my best. I can't always promise I'll be there, but <laughs> I'll do my best for sure. <laughs> All right. Alan, how about yourself? Uh, you can find me at spiritsoffrenchlick.com, all of our stuff at sillbox.com. You can find me at thealchemistcabinet.com and also Distillers Talk Podcast. If you have ghosts, you have everything podcast, wherever you get your podcast. And the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute channel on YouTube. And it just goes on and on. And just send me money. Listen, send me money and I'll shut up. <laughs> Uh, we could take up a collection. Uh, Drew, how about you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at drew.crawley63. Uh, slightly with less frequency on Twitter being sassy at drewcrawley63. And then uh, streaming music wherever you listen to your music. Some of mine's out there and more is to come. So check that out as well. Yeah, If you need a bass player, I know somebody. I just might. <laughs> there's there's your... your, your... What? Your superstar revelation right there. It's, oh, there uh, it's we go. Just, oh, here it it's goes. It's going to be Drew Crawley and uh, Nancy and me palm muting guitar. For <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. 1958 uh, Fender. All, all original. I'm your bassist. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a deal. 
I think we got a so deal. So it has been said. Guys. So it shall be done. Yeah. All right. I'll, awesome. I'll be in the guy. I'll be the guy in the crowd yelling "Free Bird." Um, <laughs> hey, do I, uh, Bourbon do I look like table. a slot machine? Yes. Uh, you can watch the show on YouTube. You can listen to the show on uh, your favorite podcast platform, as long as it's Apple, Spotify, or Google. Uh, we are on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can uh, join our Facebook page where you know folks get on there and they talk about the things that they're drinking that night and what they're listening to while they're drinking it. Um, so yeah, come join us there uh, and you know uh, share the show, like the show, subscribe to the show. Uh, you know this is the kind of stuff that we like to do. Hey Drew, we've got some some cool stuff coming up though, don't we? Yeah, we do. Well, we've been nailing down some great guests. We're going to have uh, David Jennings from Rare Bird 101. We're going to have Brian Cushing from the Victorian Bar Room. We've got bands The Cold Stairs and Sweet Lady. Um, we've got an interview coming with Eric Wolf from Stolen Wolf. All kinds of very cool stuff, just like you've heard on this one coming up. Yeah, so very cool stuff. Uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we've been at this about 13 months and we've been very fortunate to have, uh, some uh, really fun shows, really cool guests. And, uh, you know, Nancy, like I said, was, was one of the, the first that we had on our wish list when we started. So Nancy, thank you very much for, for helping, uh, well, for making that happen. So thank you. And I, I, I just wanted to give a shout out to Alan. This is empty. Thank you. Yep, I am so. In, uh, I'm gonna let's talk soon. You you, re, you reach out to me and I'll I'll get you I'll get you a couple of bottles. But yeah, absolutely, man, yeah. I'm just you're uh, way. You and you and Hubert are far more responsible for that than what you might realize. So man, I'm you are on, brother. I, that that I'm just blown away. But anyway, that's thank you. Uh, we'll talk <laughs> yes uh, all right yes. so so uh we, we've got this has been a great mm -hmm. connection show so mm -hmm. nancy and i found out that we were practically neighbors yeah mm -hmm. drew has finally found a bass player yep. and 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 stay stay tuned for the uh the very first bourbon turntable uh cover song single which is a uh, simple man saying bye Duthy Woads. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that that will Kevin that will, just did it in his head. <laughs> Simple kind of man. Well, okay. All right. Hey, uh, thank you for everyone who has watched and listened to this show. And on behalf of uh, my friend Drew, our guest host and friend Alan, and our new friend Nancy. Cheers, love, yeah. and free bird. Free bird. Woo! Free bird. <laughs> I'm out of whiskey. It's unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs>